Yi Fong, who awakened his mind-peeping skills, roamed the campus and shopping malls like a fish in water, loving flowers and protecting them. Various beautiful women couldn't help but come to his door. Extremely beautiful and cute lowly, there is a variety of pure school flowers, big-chested policewoman flowers, and concave and convex black silk ladies to choose from. The twin sister's flower, the savage sister. In law is charming and charming, and there are endless ambiguous temptations in the city. Friends who like this book are welcome to join the group, Yenmeng Group. 200,850,813 Second Group 17129162 Keywords of the Novel Days with Beautiful Women Without Pop-Ups, Days with Beautiful Women TXT Complete Collection Download, Latest Chapter Reading of Days with Beautiful Women Chapter 1 Returning to the School Flower Before the Incident You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ye, you must argue and not let my parents underestimate you. A graceful and elegant girl looked at Yi Fong with beautiful eyes. The girl smiled brightly, and her bright big eyes instantly turned into a pair of charming crescents. Looking at the delicate and reserved girl in front of him, Yi Feng's breath stopped, feeling that time had almost completely stopped at this moment. He stared at the energetic and beautiful girl in front of him with almost greedy eyes. It seems like the next moment, the girl will suddenly disappear from his side. The girl standing in front of Yi Fong has a tall body, with pink pearl shoulders and snow.white lotus arms emitting a charming luster like fresh milk. Looking face to face, the girl's breasts were stretched out into two beautiful semicircles by the fullness inside, revealing a large area of imaginative hollowing out under the towering beautiful breasts. Looking at the pure and beautiful face of the girl standing in front of him, Yi Feng suddenly felt a very unreal feeling in his heart. How can a dead person be resurrected? It seems that they have fallen into a long and uncontrollable dream, and all of this is just their own illusion. Dead Leaf, I'm talking to you, but you're ignoring me. Let's see how I deal with you. The girl's bright and pretty face showed a very displeased expression. As the campus flower of Jiangqing University, Lin Shuer is equally beautiful, elegant, and cultured. She embodies a myriad of favors and talents, and the young talent who proposes to her breaks through the threshold. Lin Shuer ultimately chose to be with her average college classmate Yi Feng. Once their relationship was exposed, it faced strong opposition from Lin Shuer's parents. In order to gain the recognition of her parents, Lin Shuer came to the bank to withdraw her years of accumulated pocket money and start a business with her boyfriend. Yi Feng's indifferent reaction made her very unhappy. She felt aggrieved and reached out her tender white hand, pinching Yi Feng's arm with force. Yi Feng's mouth twitched slightly, and he even felt pain. Isn't all of this just a dream? Yi Feng put his finger into his mouth and bit hard, the strong pain reminding him that everything in front of him was real. It's still the same bank a few months ago, and the lobby is still filled with the same men and women as before the disaster. The beautiful girl standing in front of him is the goddess Lin Shuer in his dream, whom he will never forget, no matter how many lifetimes he reincarnates or how many memories he has lost. What are you looking at? Is there a flower on my face? Lin Shuer suddenly felt a little embarrassed under Yi Feng's direct gaze, and then spat out her beautiful tongue and asked. Amidst Lin Shuer's complaints, Yi Feng finally regained consciousness. Unexpectedly, by chance, he had returned to before his girlfriend had an accident. Since I have been reborn, I must prevent tragedy from happening. Shuer, let's leave here immediately. Yi Feng grabbed Lin Shuer's white wrist and quickly ran towards the outside of the hall. It's not safe for us to go out with so much cash, why don't we wait for Xiaoyu's car? Lin Shuer looked at the bulging leather bag in her hand and said with some concern. If the next scene is exactly the same as a few months ago, a few minutes later, multiple bandits will rush into the bank, and the comfortable bank hall will quickly turn into a bloody hell on earth. At that time, it was even harder for them to leave than to reach the sky. As Yi Feng pulled Lin Shuer out at a brisk pace, he collided with a short and chubby middle-aged man who was coming towards him. 
The middle-aged man had a kind attitude and kept bowing to Yi Feng. Seeing the middle-aged man across from him, Yi Feng showed a disgusted expression, and a scene from a few months ago reappeared in front of him. In the previous life, during a melee between police and robbers, a robber aimed his gun at a middle-aged man from Japan. At the critical moment, the middle-aged man pushed Lin Shuer to avoid a disaster, while Lin Shuer was shot in the chest and fell into a pool of blood. A few months later, one day, Yi Feng saw in a news report that the Japanese businessman who killed Lin Shuer was attending a large government-organized banquet. That day, he squatted in a hotel for a long time before blocking Koizumi at the entrance of the hotel, and then asked the other party to go to a place with him. Koizumi vaguely remembered seeing this person somewhere before, but he didn't have a deep impression in his mind. If the other person was a remarkable figure in Jiangcheng, he would never forget them. Koizumi only then regarded Yi Feng as insignificant and wanted to curry favor with his ordinary Chinese people. Please forgive me. I don't have time to go out for dinner with you. While rejecting Yi Feng, Koizumi secretly said to himself that so many officials and wealthy businessmen in Jiangqing would treat him to a banquet. If everyone had to attend the banquet, wouldn't he be held to death? As Koizumi turned around, a sharp pain in his waist suddenly spread throughout his body. Get in the car. Yi Feng shouted in a deep voice, pressing a dagger against Koizumi's waist. Brother, I have plenty of money. As long as you spare me, I can give you any amount of money you want. Yi Feng ignored Koizumi's plea and stuffed him into a Jetta car, heading straight to a public fundraising area around the mountains in Jiangcheng. Half an hour later, Koizumi was pushed out of the car and when he saw a photo of a girl with long hair embedded on a tombstone, his face suddenly turned even whiter than a dead person. Pang. Yi Feng kicked out and knocked Koizumi's body upside down. Just as Koizumi fell and struggled to get up, Yi Feng stepped on his chest and said, The girl on the tombstone looks familiar to me. As a simple and kind little girl like Shuer, she would be heartbroken to see a dead animal on weekdays. Who are you harming? Why did you just kill her? Yi Feng handed out the dagger inch by inch in his hand and the sharp blade slowly pierced into Koizumi's throat. Ah! Please don't kill me, Koizumi exclaimed in agony, I have no grudges or grievances against that girl. How could I harm her? At that time, a robber shot at me and she was in front of me, so I pushed that girl. It was the vicious and poor robber who killed her. If it weren't for you pushing Shuer, she might have survived. The robber who killed Schwer has already gone to hell. If you go to hell again, the world will truly be peaceful, Yi Feng said with a cold face. The dagger in Yi Feng's hand kept pressing down, piercing into Xiao Quan's plump body inch by inch. Blood flowed out along both sides of the blade, wetting the dry dust on the ground. Under intense pain, Koizumi's facial features became twisted and deformed. That little girl is already dead. Even if you kill me, she won't come back to life. If I die, not only will you not get anything, but you will also risk your own life to kill foreign friends, which is much more serious than killing ordinary people in China. As long as you let me go, I'll give you 10 million, not 50 million, 1 billion is enough. With this money, you can marry a girl 10 times more beautiful than that dead little girl, and live happily for a lifetime every day. Koizumi screamed in agony as he pleaded with Yi Feng. Yi Feng ignored the other party's pleadings and temptations. He moved his knife hand inch by inch downwards and cut a slowly bleeding incision in Koizumi's throat, causing the other party to be in extreme pain. As Yi Feng pulled out the dagger from Koizumi's body, blood bubbles began to gush out of Koizumi's throat. Koizumi howled for an hour before dying on the spot. After stabbing Koizumi to death, Yi Feng's gaze fell on the beautiful girl in the black and white photo on the tombstone. Shuer, I've come to see you. I've been living like a walking corpse for so long, isn't it just to one day be able to wield my hand against my enemies? The Japanese devils who killed you have already been killed by me, and I should go there to accompany you. 
Yi Feng used a dagger to cut through the artery at his wrist, and bright red blood gushed out like a river overflowing over the embankment. He lifted his bloody hand and gently stroked the girl in the photo with a charming smile, as if everything had returned to before they first met. Pang. Yi Feng collided with someone again at the bank entrance, and his shoulder touched an object with a pleasant and elastic touch. After Yi Feng looked up, he saw a vast expanse of snow dot white undulations and a deep and charming ravine. A girl with a proud 36D chest and slender waist was angrily looking at him. Only then did Yi Feng realize what his shoulder had just hit. Yi Feng secretly praised the girl across from him for having too big a chest. Her chest protruded a lot from her body, and only when he touched her did he directly hit the large and round part of her chest. When touching the other person's chest, Yi Feng felt as if his shoulder had touched a soft and hard protrusion like a jujube. The strong stimulation felt when the hard spot on the shoulder lightly rubbed against the other person's chest, and Yi Feng thought to himself that there wouldn't be a vacuum inside this girl, right? How come you walk like this without long eyes? The big-breasted girl took a step back and touched the peaks and undulations on her chest, blushing and scolding the other person. The girl's pretty face turned even redder than the Red Lantern during the Chinese New Year when she thought of being attacked by a stranger on her chest, especially when the other person might have noticed that her chest was empty. The girl also regretted that she shouldn't have been in such a hurry when she came out, so much so that she didn't wear anything inside her thin bra. After colliding with a stranger, she was taken advantage of by the other person. I'm sorry. Yi Feng glanced at the girl with a flushed face in front of him and apologized devoutly. In the previous life, while Lin Shui was shot in the chest and fell to the ground, the big-breasted girl suddenly jumped up from the side to snatch the pistol of a robber. Just as she was almost successful, another robber shot from behind and killed the girl on the spot. After apologizing to the girl with a big chest, Yi Feng quickly ran outside the bank hall with Lin Shui hoping to escape from the unexpected disaster in the previous life. Walking to the entrance of the bank, Yi Feng saw a semi-old jeep suddenly break suddenly not far away. Several masked men with guns opened the car doors and rushed down towards their location. The scene of Lin Shui falling at the gunpoint of the robber in the previous life constantly appeared before Yi Feng's eyes, and his handsome features suddenly became somewhat distorted. Does the tragedy of the past have to be replayed before my own eyes? Chapter 2 The Beginning of Changing Fate You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Yi Feng knew that these robbers were all fugitives. If he continued to walk outside with Lin Shui and collided head-on with these people, he was very likely to be shot by the other party. He made a decisive decision and quickly pulled Lin Shui back to the bank lobby. Peng. Peng with several deafening gunshots, six or seven big men with guns in their hands and stockings covering their faces rushed in with a fierce force. Faced with the sudden sound of gunfire and a group of fierce masked people, some men and women in the hall screamed loudly, while others ran around aimlessly, making the scene instantly chaotic and uncontrollable. Quick squat down. Yi Feng pulled Lin Shui, who was at a loss, into an inconspicuous corner. Koizumi also reacted and crouched down not far from Yi Feng. When he turned his head, he gave a friendly smile to Yi Feng and Lin Shui. Don't be nervous, those people are just for money. After grabbing the money, they will leave. As long as we keep a low profile, nothing will happen, said Koizumi in fluent Chinese. Although he didn't know the handsome man and woman in front of him, he thought that he and the other person would share the same fate, so he took the initiative to speak out and comfort Lin Shui, who looked pitiful. Lin Shui didn't know Koizumi. When she heard the other person's kind words comforting her, she also nodded kindly towards him. Recalling his previous life experience, Yi Feng let out a disdainful cold snort in his nostrils. The person in front of him lived in pain and hatred for ten years. Even if the other person knelt at his feet and licked himself like a puppy, he would not have any good feelings for this person. Feeling the strong hostility from Yi Feng, Koizumi couldn't help but swallow the words on his lips. 
He confirmed that it was his first time meeting this young Chinese man, and he didn't understand why the other person was so hostile towards him. He couldn't help but think of his ancestors. Damn it, if you don't want to die, be honest. What I want is money. If there's someone who doesn't have eyes, I don't mind killing a few. A robber shot him in the head and then shouted at the screaming crowd. A very familiar person appeared in front of Yi Fong, and several robbers smashed the glass at the counter and used guns to force the staff to take out the cash from the safe. After receiving a large amount of cash, some robbers were still unsatisfied and pursued the ideas of customers who had raised money. A middle-aged woman refused to let go of her wallet filled with cash, causing a robber to shoot her in the thigh. Schwer, throw the leather bag out, Yi Feng said as he glanced at Lin Schwer. With his previous life experience, Yi Feng values his life even more. As long as he can survive, he doesn't care about external things like money. No. Lin Schwer shook her head. It was her parents who firmly opposed her being with Yi Feng that she put all the 200,000 yuan she had accumulated over the years into supporting Yi Feng's entrepreneurship. This money is related to whether she can be with her boyfriend in the future. Lin Shuer not only didn't throw it out, but also hugged the leather bag in her arms. Survival is the most important thing. If life is gone, even if there is more money around, what's the use? Yi Feng snatched the leather bag from Lin Shuer's hand and threw it at a nearby robber. Seeing Yi Feng take away and throw away all the pocket money she had accumulated over the years, Lin Shuer's big eyes suddenly became foggy. Although she was not a very materialistic woman, seeing the pocket money she had accumulated from childhood to adulthood fall into the hands of the robbers, especially since it had a very positive meaning for her, her heart suddenly hurt. In two lifetimes, what Yi Feng couldn't see the most was Lin Shuer crying in front of him. Seeing Lin Shuer's appearance, he hesitated to speak, but in the end, he didn't say anything. The robber put the money thrown by Yi Feng into a large backpack, and then turned his gaze to the beautiful Lin Shuer. The robber secretly praised how this girl looks even more beautiful than the big star in the TV series, especially these beautiful legs are white and tender, even more delicate than fresh tofu. TSK TSK, girl, you look so beautiful. If I had a beautiful girlfriend like you, it would be worth living ten years less. The robber's gaze fell on Lin Shuer's uneven body, constantly praising her. Damn it, when is it? You still have the leisure to care about whether someone else's girlfriend is pretty. Hurry up and collect the money, and leave early before the police come over, another big man scolded his companion. Hmm you're really lucky, young man. The robber glanced at Yi Feng and then quickly ran towards the door with his bag and another companion. Seeing this group of robbers intending to leave, many people took a long breath, thinking that they had finally escaped. However, Yi Feng furrowed his eyebrows, knowing that the real big storm had just begun. Without any accidents, the first two robbers had just arrived at the door when they were shot in the chest and fell down. Amidst the muffled gunfire, the remaining robbers panicked and fled back to the bank lobby. Almost at the same time, there was a loud sound of police sirens outside, and the sound of stern threats and warnings from police propaganda personnel could be heard from the loudspeaker. Brother Yi, what should we do? Lin Shuer's pretty face changed color and her body trembled slightly as she saw the robbers roaring and holding guns in the hall. She said she couldn't believe that a scene from a movie would happen before her eyes. Don't be afraid, I won't allow anyone to harm you, Yi Feng said in a religious tone, holding Lin Shuer in his arms. You, stand up for me. And you two little lovers, don't hug me, stand up for me too. A robber pointed a gun at Xiao Quan and shouted at Yi Feng and Lin Shuer. Why me? Koizumi asked with a puzzled expression. You, the old man, have the brightest head in the entire hall. Who am I looking for if I don't find you? The robber shook his pistol and shouted. Koizumi only then realized that his bald head had caused the trouble. He stood up and said, Don't shoot, don't shoot. China-Japan friendship. I am a friendly person from Japan. If you kill me, 
it will cause a serious international dispute. If you have any requirements, I can contact the Japanese embassy to resolve it. Contact Nima, can your little devil's embassy manage our affairs in China? The robber paused and continued, before I die, I can kill a little devil, which is enough. The warning from the police outside was even harsher. The armed robber glanced outside and a cruel smile suddenly appeared on his lips. Without hesitation, he aimed the gun at Koizumi's head and pulled the trigger. Koizumi just quietly analyzed that Lin Shuer was very close to him. If he pushed her a little, he might have avoided a disaster. As for the fate of that girl in the end, it was not within his consideration. Just as Koizumi reached out and tried to push Lin Shuer over to block the bullet for him, Yi Feng, who had been closely monitoring the opponent, suddenly flew up and kicked Koizumi hard in the back. Ah! Koizumi lost control of his body and collided fiercely with the robber, shooting a speeding bullet directly into his chest. Seeing Koizumi fall to the ground and scream in agony in a pool of blood, Yi Feng took a deep breath. At this moment, he had changed history, and Lin Shuer, who should have died, survived. As the group of robbers turned red-eyed one by one, they also became more dangerous at this moment. Yi Feng and his girlfriend were always at their gunpoint, and the real danger had not yet been relieved. Yi Feng noticed that he was only a few steps away from a robber, and then suddenly had a strange idea. If he could seize the gun from the robber's hand, perhaps he could change history again. Pang. Yi Feng took a few steps forward and punched a robber hard in the face. Taking advantage of the other person's dizziness and dizziness, he grabbed their arm. Yi Feng was originally a Sonda enthusiast. In the face of crisis, his potential was fully unleashed, and he was able to control the opponent cleanly and efficiently in a face dot to dot face encounter. Damn it, kill this troublemaking little white face for me. The leader of the robber couldn't help but shout when he saw a companion being twisted by Yi Chen's wrist. The other robbers in the hall all aimed their black guns at Yi Feng. At the moment when several robbers pulled the trigger, Yi Feng suddenly turned around and quickly exchanged positions with the entangled robbers. The robber controlled by Yi Feng was shot several times in the back at the same time, and blood gushed out from the person's back like a spring. Yi Feng took the opportunity to reverse the muzzle of the gun and fired several shots at the four robbers behind him. As four robbers were slowly falling to the ground after being shot, several armed police officers suddenly broke in. The police officers were unaware of what had happened in the hall. When they saw multiple people being shot and falling to the ground in the hall, Yi Feng stood in the center of the hall, his pistol still smoking. It was only then that they mistook him for a fierce robber. Kill him. Several police officers quickly exchanged glances and aimed their guns at Yi Feng, who stood proudly in the center of the hall. Chapter 3 Infinite Strength You are listening at NovelFull.audio Don't. Upon hearing the terrifying order from the leading police officer, Lin Shuer's pretty face suddenly turned red. At the next moment, she rushed forward without hesitation and opened her arms to block Yi Feng's body. Yi Feng's eyes are a bit moist. After his rebirth, he always wanted to protect his girlfriend, but at a critical moment when he was in crisis, Lin Shuer stood up to protect him. A few police officers were slightly taken aback. They knew that this weak and elegant girl could not be a robber, and they didn't know why the other party came forward to protect the young man with a gun. He's not a robber, he's a hero. A positively charged and extremely pleasant female voice suddenly sounded. The 36D big-breasted girl who once collided with Yi Feng at the door stood up in the crowd. Captain Xia, why are you here? A police officer recognized who the big-chested girl was before unexpectedly calling out. The big-breasted girl has always been holding on to the incident of being attacked by Yi Feng just now, but she will not distort the fact she saw because of it. I am Xia Xian from the Criminal Investigation Brigade. I have seen everything just now. If this citizen didn't decisively take his gun and shoot those robbers, I don't know how many hostages in the hall would have died. The girl said to all the police officers. 
Yi Feng unexpectedly glanced at the girl with a big chest, who turned out to be the captain of the criminal investigation brigade. No wonder in the previous life, there were so many people in the hall who dared not stand up when facing the robbers. Even when the robbers shot and killed the hostages, most of them were still as honest as lambs waiting to be slaughtered, but she fought against these fierce robbers barehanded. This citizen, everything is over now. Do you immediately put down your gun? Xia Xian deliberately spoke softly as she looked at Yi Feng with a solemn expression. Yi Feng always felt something was wrong, so he didn't put down his gun. The muzzle was even more crooked and pointed towards the nearby female police officer Xia Xian. In the eyes of others, his action naturally became extremely disrespectful and even extremely dangerous. If you point your gun at Captain Xia again, we won't be polite, a police officer shouted and aimed his gun at Yi Feng. The other police officers saw the situation and secretly said, isn't this person a robber? Since that's the case, why did he point his gun at Captain Xiao? Did this person's brain receive some kind of stimulation just now when he fired, which is something that ordinary people cannot understand? These police officers raised their guns again and aimed their guns at Yi Feng from different angles. If the other party dared to shoot, even if the person was indeed mentally stimulated, they would immediately turn Yi Feng into a stopper. Pain. Despite being pointed at by multiple police officers, Yi Feng still fired directly, a flash of fire quickly shooting at the big-chested girl across from him. No one is allowed to shoot. Although Xia Xian was not aware of the reason, she issued the strictest warning to several police officers who wanted to shoot in a commanding tone. A muffled groan came from behind Xia Xian, as a high-dot-speed bullet shot into a fierce bandit who suddenly stood up and aimed his gun at her. The speeding bullet entered the robber's front neck and then shot out from the back neck. The robber's body fell backwards and he died on the spot. The pure white wall was splattered with blood and water from the robber's neck, turning a bloody red. Watching the neck of the fallen robber continuously bleed outwards, all the police officers were shocked to break out in a cold sweat. Unexpectedly, there was still a robber in the hall who had not died yet. They quietly picked up a gun and attempted to attack the girl with a big chest. If it weren't for this young man seeing something and shooting in a timely manner, Xia Xian would probably have died a long time ago. Seeing the body to the end, the police never understood how the young man with the student's appearance discovered that the robber was not dead and secretly planned to attack Xia Xian. Only then did they look at Yi Feng with a puzzled expression. After shooting, Yi Feng threw the pistol directly onto the ground. He also broke out in a cold sweat just now. Fortunately, Xia Xian shouted in time. Otherwise, the final outcome of this matter would likely be that he saved this big-chested police officer and was actually shot dead by these police officers on the spot. The reason why Yi Feng refused to put down his pistol just now was that in his previous life, he witnessed multiple police officers cleaning up the scene. A robber who had not yet died after being shot suddenly shot and killed several police officers. Many things in this life have changed, but Yi Feng still dare not be careless. When he looked at several fallen robbers with the remaining light of his eyes, he saw a slight movement of the armed finger behind Xia Xian, and then he aimed his gun at the robber. The robber and Xia Xian were almost on the same line, so the police would mistakenly think that he was going to take action against the female police officer. However, he shot and killed a heavily injured robber who wanted to support her. Although everything just now was thrilling, the final outcome was good. Since his rebirth, Yi Feng's spirit has been highly concentrated. After killing the robber, his mind completely relaxed and he felt an unprecedented fatigue. The host's mission to save his girlfriend was successful, and his boundless energy was successfully activated. A deep and emotionless voice suddenly rang out in Yi Feng's mind. Yi Feng, who was extremely tired, ignored the so dot called boundless energy activated in his mind. He just wanted to find a place to sleep well for three days and three nights. The police requested Yi Feng to go to the police station with them to take notes. Xia Xian arranged for a car to take the haggard Lin Shuer back home, 
and then accompany Ji Feng to the police station. Stopping at the entrance of the police station, Xia Xian, who was walking ahead, suddenly heard her phone ringing and immediately stopped her steps. Yi Feng, who was following behind, was stealing a peek at the uneven figure of this big-breasted girl. Xia Xian's chest is large, but her waist is small and slender, not enough to hold. Her buttocks are round and perky, and under her ultra-short skirt, her slender and straight legs are as clear and fair as ivory. Perhaps related to a lot of exercise, her legs are round and tight, sturdy but not thick and without any excess fat. Any psychologically normal man would involuntarily feel the urge to touch their thighs. Yi Feng considered himself a very determined person, but when faced with Xia Xian's plump buttocks and slender thighs not far away, he couldn't help but have wild thoughts in his heart. Due to Yi Feng's fantasies as he watched Xia Xian's graceful back, he didn't notice that the other person suddenly stopped walking. Unable to stop, his body collided with her graceful back. While peeking at Xia Xian's youthful and energetic body, Yi Feng's crotch had already bulged up unconsciously. As the two of their bodies pressed tightly together, the protruding part of his crotch directly pressed against each other's tempting buttocks. Through his thin short skirt, Yi Feng could almost feel the amazing elasticity emanating from Xia Xian's small fragrant buttocks, and his heart was stimulated by some powerful force, making his lower part even harder. Thinking that he had unintentionally taken advantage of this big-breasted girl, this time he was even more powerful than the last time when he hit her chest, especially when he poked his way into her plump and fragrant buttocks, Yi Feng's face became a bit awkward. He secretly said that the other person wouldn't slap him in the face when he was angry, would he? Damn it, why did you bump into me? Xia Xian asked, biting her teeth. While reprimanding Yi Feng, Xia Xian felt a hard object pressing against the sensitive area of her buttocks, causing her legs to soften and her body to stand slightly unstable. Yi Feng was worried that the other party would fall, so he grabbed their small waist. Due to concerns that the other party might misunderstand him, Yi Feng took the initiative to explain, You suddenly stopped and I couldn't hold back, that's why I bumped into you. Upon hearing the continuous ringing of her phone in her pocket, Xia Xian ignored the awkward situation in front of her and answered the phone, asking, Dad, why did you think of calling me? Xin Xin, I heard you encountered a group of robbers at the bank. You didn't encounter any danger, did you? Of course not, who am I? I was the champion of Sanda at the police academy back then. Xia Xian kept twisting her body and said in a coquettish tone. After seeing Xia Xian answer the phone, he completely ignored the awkward situation he was in. Yi Feng released his grip on the other person's waist and continued to hold it, leaving him in a dilemma. Especially at this moment, Yi Feng is still pressing against the slightly raised buttocks of the other party. When Xia Xian is acting coquettishly, she keeps twisting her body, causing him to constantly rub against the sensitive area of the other party's snow buttocks. Feeling the amazing elasticity emanating from the other person's small fragrant buttocks, Yi Feng was almost indecisive. If it weren't for the presence of others around him, he might have directly brought the other person to justice. Xia Xian hung up the phone with a relaxed expression. Seeing the surprised gazes of several colleagues around her, she remembered that she was still being held in Yi Feng's arms, and her pretty face blushed like a ripe red apple. Don't you let go of me yet. Do you want to die? Xia Xian felt ashamed and wanted to die. She turned her head and fiercely pushed Yi Feng's chest. Ah! Yi Feng, who had a solid footplate, did not move at all. Under the opponent's counter shock, Xia Xian became unstable and leaned forward, before she let out a scream of surprise. Be careful. Yi Feng grabbed the other person's waist and forcefully pulled into his arms to prevent them from falling on the spot. After Xia Xian's body was grabbed, she no longer tilted forward but instead collided with Yi Feng. As their bodies pressed together without any gap, the protrusion under Yi Feng's crotch forcefully pressed into Xia Xian's hip groove, and then moved forward all the way. Yi Feng could clearly feel himself underneath, 
breaking through layers of barriers and directly tapping into the soft, deeply concave area of the other person's buttocks. If we compare Yi Feng's actions at this moment to shooting a target, his waist just now naturally straightened, definitely hitting the bullseye. Chapter 4 Long-Legged Female Police Flower You are listening at NovelFull.audio Feeling Yi Feng's hardness pressing against her sensitive spot through her thin short skirt, Xia Xian felt ashamed while her body softened. Her plump and occasionally slender body collapsed weakly into Yi Feng's sturdy embrace. Remembering that she had been taken advantage of by the young man she met for the first time, Xia Xian gritted her teeth and raised her hand to slap the other person. With such a big search, it was the first time a man had fiercely poked her body in the most sensitive area. Seeing Yi Feng's clear gaze, Xia Xian's small hand, which had been swung, did not fall and weakly drooped. Seeing Xia Xian standing firm, Yi Feng quickly let go of the other person to avoid being misunderstood by those around him. He wanted to have an outdoor passionate performance with this big chested female police officer. Xia Xian's pretty face blushed like two pieces of red cloth. She turned her head and ran out of the police station, ignoring Yi Feng who was about to take notes. Looking at Xia Xian's pretty back, Yi Feng couldn't help but think of the enchanting moment when the two of them were tearing each other apart and he bumped into each other's fragrant buttocks. He suddenly felt a fever on his face. Especially when he and the other party's bodies were tightly intertwined, he could vaguely hear the sound of hard sliding into the pool. That little girl must have hated herself for such a big loss, right? I can't believe that by chance, I have taken advantage of this beautiful female police officer many times. She wouldn't hate me for this, would she? In the inquiry room of the police station, a director named Li Zhang is responsible for inquiring about the transcripts. I have carefully checked the internal monitoring of the bank, and the Japanese friend named Koizumi died tragically after being pushed by you. Do you know that doing so is suspected of intentional homicide? Li Zheng said with a heavy face, very unfriendly. Yi Feng glanced at Li Zheng and asked, since Li Bureau has seen the surveillance footage, they should know that it was Koizumi who pushed my girlfriend first. I accidentally touched him to save her. It's true that Koizumi pushed your girlfriend. You can sue him in court or report the situation to our police, but you don't have the right to kick him. Your actions caused the death of that Japanese friend on the spot. Even if it wasn't intentional homicide, it's still considered negligent homicide, Li Zheng shouted in a deep voice. Yi Feng cursed inwardly, as long as I slowed down a bit at the time, Lin Shui might have already passed away. This guy ignored the facts and asked himself to complain to the police about Koizumi's actions in court. This guy is completely talking to that Japanese little devil with his mouth tilted. A few years ago, there was a police officer who worked as a police officer in a rural and industrial area. In order to perform meritorious deeds, he had someone intentionally steal, and then he went to arrest someone for meritorious service. Yi Feng glanced at Li Zheng and said, once, because the reward was not agreed upon, the police officer directly killed his colleague who disguised himself as a thief. The victim was unjustly accused, but the police officer was promoted and became rich all the way, even reaching the position of deputy director of the Jiangqing Police Bureau. I don't know what Director Li thinks of this matter. What are you talking nonsense about? Upon hearing Yi Feng's words, Li Zheng's body suddenly shook and his momentum noticeably weakened. A few years ago, when Li was working in rural areas, he did indeed do what Yi Feng said. Many years have passed since that incident, and Li Zheng believed that no one in the world would know about it again. However, when Yi Feng spoke about it face dot to dot face, his face changed greatly. In his previous life, Li Zheng was responsible for handling bank robberies. He clearly acted unfairly when handling the case. At that time, Yi Feng ran around and shouted many times, hoping that the police would severely punish Koizumi and bring justice to Lin Shui who died. Koizumi had some connections and was eventually released on bail without charge. 
Yi Feng only began secretly investigating Li Zheng, who was in charge of this case, and ultimately led to his downfall and imprisonment. When making the transcript, Li Zheng didn't say that he bravely fought against the criminals and saved many hostages, but he was constantly entangled in the incident of Koizumi's accidental death. It was only then that Yi Feng threatened the other party with some insider information he had known throughout his life. Seeing Li Zheng bowing his head and not speaking, Yi Feng stared at him without blinking. As he stared closely at Li Zheng's eyes, a sudden surge of energy in Yi Feng's body gathered in the eye generation. An incredible thing happened, and he saw Li Zheng's inner thoughts. Strange, how could this little white face know what I've done before? If he had told me all about it, wouldn't I have been ruined? This little white-faced person has already arrived at the police station. I might as well say that Koizumi's death was intentional murder by this person. Only by fulfilling the crime of the other person's murder can the things he once did be forever concealed, Li Jing thought to himself. Yi Feng remembered that after shooting down the armed robber in the bank lobby, a voice in his mind suggested that he had successfully saved his girlfriend and activated his boundless energy. He vaguely guessed that his ability to see and understand the other person's inner thoughts should be related to the activated boundless energy in his body. He never expected that his awakened boundless energy could have such a wonderful effect, causing his eyes to mutate and see the other person's inner thoughts. When Yi Feng looked at the other party again and used his mind-peeping technique, he realized that Li Zheng was not colluding with Koizumi. Xia Xian witnessed the truthful reporting of everything that happened in the bank hall, and the credit for subduing the robbers was also attributed to Yi Feng. Li Zhengzi, who was in charge of this case, became a troublemaker, which made his heart very unbalanced. Later, during surveillance, Li Zheng saw that Yi Feng had kicked Koizumi before attempting to make a case of intentionally harming a foreign friend. If someone forcibly imposes the crime they want to add on me, I will reveal everything I know to the public. Barefoot people are not afraid of wearing shoes. I wonder if Li Ju thinks what I said is right. Yi Feng looked at Li Zheng and said. Damn it, this little white-faced guy dares to threaten himself with that. Does this guy still think he has a chance to leave the police station? Li Zheng thought to himself. After understanding Li Zheng's inner thoughts, Yi Feng inwardly exclaimed that something was wrong. If the other party were determined to clean up themselves and found any excuse to detain them, as long as they were locked up, they could easily weave charges against them. Captain Xia Xian should be coming soon. I think even if Li Ju wants to reverse black and white, it will be difficult, said Yi Feng. Li Zheng asked with a puzzled expression, what is your relationship with Xia Xian? At the same time, Li Zheng thought to himself, Xia Xian, that little girl, is just the captain of the criminal investigation brigade. Although her title is one level lower than mine, she has a deep background. If she stands up to defend this little white face, it will be difficult for her to deal with the other party herself. After Yi Feng used his mind-peeping technique to understand Li Zheng's thoughts, he immediately felt a sense of joy in his heart. Unexpectedly, Xia Xian, a beautiful female police officer, had a strong background, which made Li Zheng hesitant about him. He said that the little girl did the right thing by making a big fuss. I am Xinxin's boyfriend, Yi Chen pretended to say in response to Li Zheng's inquiry. Damn it, you kid really dares to brag. Isn't the white dress girl you're with in the bank hall your girlfriend? You already have a girlfriend, how could you still be Captain Xia's boyfriend? Li Zheng shouted incredulously. Which capable young person nowadays doesn't have more than one girlfriend? Director Li, you are too outdated. Yi Feng said casually. He kept apologizing to Xia Xian in his heart, and in order to avoid being framed by Li Zheng, he had to casually ask that unparalleled police officer to impersonate his girlfriend. Li Zheng frowned slightly and thought to himself, nowadays, men and women are very open, and their relationships are particularly complex. Xia Xian does indeed defend this person very much. Is there really such a chaotic relationship between them? Upon hearing Yi Feng's words, Li Zheng had a slight waver in his idea of secretly imprisoning the other party. 
thinking that some of his tricks were in their hands, he dared not easily let Yi Feng go, which was why he was in a dilemma. Bang dang. Just as the conversation between the two was deadlocked, the sound of pushing the door rang, and a uniformed police officer with straight long hair and neat bangs on her forehead pushed in. Yi Feng's gaze fell on the seductive and uneven body of the female police officer entering the door. Xia Xian, who pushed through the door, was dressed in a half-sleeved police uniform and a black short skirt. Her delicate and pretty face was adorned with a solemn and inviolable look. Her full and plump chest bulged her bra, and her long and slender legs below emitted a charming white halo. Looking at Xia Xian's bulging chest, waist, asterisk 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 asterisk, and snow. White long legs, Yi Feng felt an indescribable sense of amazement in his heart. In the bank lobby, most of Yi Feng's attention was focused on how to change his fate and save his girlfriend Lin Shui, without paying attention to how beautiful this big-breasted girl was. When Xia Xian suddenly appeared in front of him wearing a solemn police uniform, she realized that the girl was not inferior to Lin Shui in terms of beauty, temperament, and physique. Especially Xia Xian, dressed in a cool and stylish police uniform, stood up in a lively manner, which involuntarily reminded people of the bloodthirsty in movies and TV dramas. As a key member of the criminal investigation brigade, she personally experienced the bank robbery case. According to Xia Xian's original intention, she had intended to accompany Yi Feng on the interrogation record of this case. Unexpectedly, such an awkward situation occurred between the two at the entrance of the police station, and Xia Xian ran back to her residence. When taking a shower, Xia Xian saw that the charming area between her legs had become slightly swollen and red, and she cursed inwardly, damn it, if it weren't for seeing you save my life at the bank, and with your bumping into my swollen spot, I would have beaten my parents so hard that they wouldn't even recognize your appearance. In the bank lobby, Xia Xian originally wanted to snatch a robber's pistol, but Yi Feng took the lead. She was confident that with her own skills, it should not be difficult to snatch the pistol from the robber's hand. The difficulty lies in her snatching the pistol of one of the robbers. If the other robbers shoot, she will never be able to instantly turn the robber's body like Yi Feng. If she acted, she might have been killed by other robbers on the spot, and Yi Feng could have saved her life. After taking a shower and changing into a police uniform, Xia Xian's mood gradually improved, and she remembered Yi Feng at the police station before driving back to the station and encountering Li Zheng making things difficult for Yi Chen. As a witness to the whole incident, Xia Xian fully agrees with Yi Feng's actions and feels unable to accept Li Zheng's style. Seeing Xia Xian's pretty face almost dripping with water, Li Zheng thought to himself, Damn it, it seems that what this little white face just said should be true. I can't believe that Xia Xian, who looks quite innocent, is actually doing this kind of thing behind her back. This sullen little girl probably knew she was making things difficult for her mistress, so she came over angrily to settle accounts with her. What should she do if she starts throwing a tantrum later? Chapter 5 Chi Pao Girl You are listening at NovelFull.audio Li Ju, I heard you question the young man who stepped forward in the bank robbery case for intentional homicide. Is that the case? Xia Xian asked with a calm and displeased expression. The first thing that Xia Xian said when she entered the room was to help Yi Feng apologize, and Li Zheng believed more in what the other party had just said. Li Zheng thought to himself, what does a young man stand up for? This little white face is your mistress, and of course, you can say whatever he does. Xia Xian, this little girl, looks very pure, and even shares a man with other girls. I don't know if her identity is a mistress or a mistress. Damn it, why doesn't this little white face look inferior to her in all aspects, but Yen Fu is not shallow. How could she have the opportunity to play with these two stunning and exquisite girls at the same time? Thinking of the girl in the video with a flowing white dress and looking at Xia Xian, who had a protruding and curvaceous figure, Li Zheng suddenly became jealous of Yi Feng. When Yi Feng was shooting at a robber in the bank, he pushed a Japanese friend, causing the other person to die on the spot. 
If we don't give an explanation, I'm afraid the Japanese embassy will protest diplomatically. Li Zheng frowned and said. I have watched the surveillance footage of the bank, and the target of the robber was originally a little devil. The little devil planned to have someone block the bullet in order to save his own life. At that time, either the Japanese little devil died, or the girl had an accident. Does Li Ju hope to see his compatriots have an accident? Xia Xian continued with a cold face. Li Zheng secretly thought to himself that if the girl who died at the time was actually a girl in a white dress, this matter would have been easier to deal with. It would have been difficult to handle if it had been a Japanese person who died. It's strange. According to theory, Xia Xian and that girl should have a romantic rival relationship. She doesn't mind speaking for Yi Feng. How could she still maintain her romantic rival like this? The young girl's thoughts are too hard to understand now. Although Captain Xia's words have some truth, the person who died this time was not an ordinary citizen, but a Japanese friend. If not handled properly, it will cause international disputes. Li Zheng still insisted on his own opinion. Xia Xian intercepted Li Zheng's words and said, Directorly, you are defending that little devil like this. Do you know what this is? Will you die if you don't act like a traitor? Who said I was going to be a traitor? I just inquired about the situation at that time and didn't intend to pursue this little brother's actions. I have already asked everything I should. Xiao Xia, you can take him away any time. Seeing Xia Xian pushing this matter onto the standpoint of national righteousness, Li Zheng was worried that if he continued to speak for the Japanese people, he would be accused of being a traitor and traitor, so he quickly changed his mind. Upon seeing Yi Feng finally return, Lin Shui threw herself into Yi Feng's arms and wept bitterly, tears dripping like pearls wetting a large shirt on his chest. Shui, don't worry, everything is over, Yi Feng's hand gently caressed Lin Shui's soft long hair. Yi Feng held Lin Shui in his arms and couldn't help but think of the huge difference between the two. He comes from a poor rural area and does not have a prominent family background, but he has always been the undisputed top scorer in school exams of all sizes. Every time in the exam, Yi Feng achieved close to perfect scores in all subjects, becoming the undisputed number one in the school. As the goddess of Jiangqing University, Lin Shui not only looks beautiful, but also excels in academic performance. Whether she works hard or not, she always ranks below Yi Feng, and is jokingly referred to by her alumni as the second oldest student of Jiangqing University. During an event at school, the two of them co-hosted a very successful social gathering, and only then did they become familiar with each other. In the future, by the lakeside of Jiangqing University and by the avenue lined with trees, sweet figures of the two often appear. Countless boys in school are undoubtedly dissatisfied with Yi Feng, a poor boy from the countryside, who successfully counterattacked by Fu Mei, but they cannot interfere with Yi Feng and Lin Shui being together. The real resistance comes from Lin Shui's parents. Lin Shui's father is the deputy district chief of a district in Jiangqing, and his position in the system is not low, but there is still a lot of room for improvement. Lin Shui's mother is a senior professor at Jiangqing Qi High School. Both of her parents are influential individuals. From birth, Lin Shui was a towering princess. People like her could only marry young talents from prestigious families with higher status, but were destined to be unable to be picked by ordinary people. Sometimes Yi Feng also wants to give up this unequal love, but Lin Shui's attitude is even more firm than Yi Feng's. In order to be with Lin Shui and not be ridiculed as a toad eating swan meat, Yi Feng decided to take a leave of absence to start a business. At first, Lin Shui advised Yi Feng to prioritize his studies. When she saw the other party's resolute attitude, she went to the bank to withdraw her years of accumulated pocket money to support Yi Feng's entrepreneurship. However, she encountered a terrifying nightmare like experience. Seeing Lin Shui with a pale appearance, Yi Feng gently comforted her by holding her waist. Lin Shui's pale face gradually turned red, and her beautiful eyes regained their former radiance. The next day, Yi Feng did not go to school 
but went to the bank to negotiate a loan. The suburban area of Dongcheng that he rented was the starting point of the high dot speed railway from Jiangcheng to Yanjing. The news of the construction of the high dot speed railway in his previous life was publicly reported by Jiangcheng TV shortly after Lin Shui's accident. The land of the first generation of Jiangcheng Dongcheng immediately skyrocketed. Yi Feng keenly captured the enormous business opportunities contained within it. If we can purchase land nearby at a low price before the news of high dot speed rail construction is leaked, and then transfer it at a high price when appropriate, we can make huge profits from it. Even if Yi Feng took the hundreds of thousands in Lin Shui's hands, he could only buy an ordinary bungalow at most which was far from his goal of hoarding a large amount of land. He refused Lin Shui's financial help because he had his pride. After a brief inquiry at the bank, Yi Feng found out that ordinary people like him find it almost impossible to obtain a large loan from the bank. As he left the bank and walked back, Yi Feng secretly sighed in his heart. Even though he knew amazing secrets that no one knew in this life, he still couldn't make money from them. That's why he was very unwilling. Hello sir, welcome to the Emperor Leisure Center. Two tall and curvaceous girls in Kipeos bowed slightly to Yi Feng. As the two young girls lowered their heads slightly, a stunning snow dot white tremble on their chests was extremely dazzling, and their big eyes were as bright as autumn water. The round and beautiful legs exposed on both sides of their Chong San, along with the sweet smile on their pretty faces, were extremely pleasing to the eye. The two young girls looked sweet and pure, and the improved Chong Sam not only outlined their curvaceous figure, but also perfectly exposed their provocative career line and slender thighs. The two stood tall and graceful, it was difficult not to attract the man's attention. Upon seeing two Chong Sam girls greeting him, Yi Feng realized that he had unknowingly walked to the entrance of a large entertainment city. Looking at the words, Emperor Entertainment City, above his head, Yi Feng vaguely remembered that this luxurious leisure center not only had various special services, but also was a relatively large secret casino in the East City. After losing Lin Shui in his previous life, he accidentally came here and lost everything he had inside, living a life of hunger for a long time. Looking at the magnificent Emperor Entertainment City, Yi Feng suddenly thought that if he relied on boundless energy to make a move, he might get a few completely different ones from the previous life. If he could win money at the casino, wouldn't he be able to easily solve the large amount of startup funds he needed to buy a property? Chapter 6 I am the god of gamblers, who are I afraid of? You are listening at NovelFull.audio After a moment of contemplation, Yi Feng turned around and entered the extraordinary Imperial Leisure Center. At a counter, he exchanged his 8,000 yuan for a small handful of chips and then entered a smaller room. Yi Feng is not good at gambling, and the same goes for this life. But he can use his mind-peeping skills to understand the thoughts of others, in order to achieve the goal of cheating and seize the opportunity to win big money. If he continued to use his mind-peeping technique, it would consume a lot of physical strength, so Yi Feng chose the relatively simple dice rolling. By peeking into the trader's heart, Yi Feng learned that the person who threw the sieve could easily throw any desired points through some special means. Only then did Yi Feng realize that losing in his previous life was a mess, not bad luck. Nowadays, Yi Feng is not afraid of being manipulated by casino players. After the opponent finishes throwing, he can peek into their psychology and determine the size of the sieve before placing a bet. With this, he can stand undefeated. After winning dozens in a row, Yi Feng's 8,000 chips in front of him turned into about 200,000 yuan. Playing around was no longer enough to satisfy his desires, so he put away the chips on the table and went to a high dot end gambling room. Several hundred thousand is just a small amount, and Yi Feng's consecutive victories did not attract the attention of high dot level people in the casino. On the third floor, there are clearly more gambling opportunities here. Yi Feng only used a few mind-peeping techniques and won over two million. This young man has good luck, why don't you have an older sister to play with you for a while? A charming woman wearing low-cut clothes, round lotus arms, 
and a plump half-exposed chest twisted her fat buttocks and approached Yi Fong. As soon as the charming woman came over, she immediately caught the attention of many men around her. Firstly, this tall and plump woman is very beautiful, and secondly, her attire is very attractive. The low bra of a charming woman is so low that it cannot be lowered any further. The huge fullness on her chest is exposed in half. As she walks gently, the two tender plump masses on her chest sway non-dot-stop like two depth bombs. The neckline of a charming woman cannot be lower, and her short skirt is almost to the extreme. Her white and tender thigh skin is faintly visible within the mesh of long stockings, and as she moves her lotus steps, her plump buttocks are faintly visible. If a typical girl dresses like this, she may not even be able to walk in the eyes of countless men, but this woman is elegant and her plump buttocks are twisted even more vigorously. Yi Feng's gaze fell on the charming woman. This woman can only be considered as good dot looking, much worse than the peerless beauty of Lin Shuer and Lu Shushir. Her advantage is that she dares to wear clothes and expose them, so that she can become the focus of men's eyes no matter where she goes. In the past, many wealthy gamblers who won money at gambling houses, after encountering charming women, mostly returned their capital with interest to the other party. This woman's gambling skills are probably among the best in the entire Jiangcheng. Yi Feng just glanced at the other person a few more times. The reason why charming women dress like this is also meaningful. If she were to gamble with someone, facing a beautiful woman who was almost half naked and had ample breasts and buttocks, who could concentrate on gambling. The difference on the gambling table was a thousand miles, and her attire could gain some unfair advantages. The reason why charming women can win away the money of many clever gamblers is really due to her clever gambling skills. The glamorous attire only serves as an icing on the cake. Two million or so is not a small amount anymore. Yi Feng knew he had won money continuously and had already caught the attention of the casino executives. The purpose of a charming woman coming to see him was nothing more than to force him to spit back the money he had won. It's already very late, and my wife is still waiting at home. I can't play for long. Yi Feng looked at the charming two hemispheres on the chest of the charming woman and said with a glance at the unfathomable snow ditch. By continuously using the technique of peeping into the heart, Yi Feng's body had become extremely fatigued. If he continued to use this method endlessly, he was not sure if he would faint on the spot. Only then did he find a way to fight quickly and make a quick decision. We can win a few games without wasting too much of the handsome guy's time, said the charming woman with a sweet smile. As she spoke, the two plump breasts of the charming woman continued to tremble, emitting charming waves. Faced with such a seductive charm, Yi Feng's gaze also became hot. Several men at nearby tables stole glances and swallowed their saliva, wishing to take a bite on her plump figure. Seeing the reaction of the men around her, while smiling confidently, the charming woman thought to herself, Do you think I'll have time to play with you, this little white face, all night? My card playing skills are superb. I can push any card I want, and with just a few moves, I can win all the money you win from the casino. Yi Feng did not stare for a long time at the two most eye dot catching protrusions on the seductive woman's chest, but instead looked closely into her eyes. After peeking into the thoughts of the charming woman's heart, Yi Feng couldn't help but be startled. I can't believe that a charming woman not only has the ability to be beautiful, but also has such skills. If she pushes the smaller cards to herself and then hands the larger cards to her hands, even if she is proficient in mind peeping, it will not be of much use. The only way to crack it is to force the opponent's hand not to touch the cards on the table. Yi Feng thought anxiously. Is there no problem with this sister's card pushing technique? Yi Feng asked in a probing tone. Of course I will make a fortune in secret, otherwise how can I win you? You're such a newbie, you don't even understand the basic principle of ten bets and nine lies, the charming woman thought to herself. She said, how could it be? Our casino has always had a good reputation. How could we do things that deceive customers in secret? We are absolutely innocent here. 
you can put your heart in your stomach. I still can't believe my sister. It's okay to play a few games with you, but I have to have the little girl next to you handle the cards to rest assured. If you agree, I'll sit down and play with you. If you don't agree, I'll leave now. Yi Feng had already been calculating in his heart, pointing to a girl wearing a chi pao not far away. Most of the girls in the casino are I dot catching vases, and even if they know a little bit about playing cards, they are never as difficult to deal with as the charming women in front of them. It was only then that Yi Feng called a girl wearing a sexy chi pao to replace the charming women in playing cards. No, I don't know anything. The girl in the chi pao waved her hands repeatedly, her pretty face full of panic, and she was also surprised by Yi Feng's proposal. Yi Feng glanced into the eyes of the girl in the chi pao and, after confirming that the other party was not lying, smiled and said, It's only because you don't understand anything that I asked you to deal the cards for us. Sure. The charming woman nodded and said in a clearly displeased tone. The charming woman guessed that Yi Feng must know something to make this proposal, and in front of many players, she couldn't say anything. Seeing the beautiful manager of the casino personally leave, Several gamblers at nearby tables drop their cards and come to watch. Some of these people want to see who wins and loses in this gambling game, while others approach and peek at the career lines and stockings on the alluring woman's body. When Yi Feng saw the girl in the Chi Pao reaching out her Chan Chan Jade hand to hand out the cards, she suddenly said, Miss, please shine the first two cards directly on the table. Yi Feng's words not only sparked discussions among the onlookers, but the charming woman also showed a puzzled expression. Playing card games with psychological warfare elements like Xia Jinhua, only extremely confident people will choose to reveal their first two cards. If either party does not reveal their cards, the other party can refer to the cards displayed by the other party and make the most favorable judgment based on the cards in their hands. The same principle applies to the situation where one side wins and the other side does not intend to follow up, they must double the bet. The higher the risk, the greater the return. With the skill of peeping into the heart, Yi Feng Liang opened his cards, which not only did not harm him at all, but also allowed him to take the opportunity to understand the other party's inner thoughts. Only by pretending to be generous in front of others can Yi Feng be seen as a sign of confidence. Some people who initially did not have a positive outlook on Yi Feng also re-examined him. Xiao Tsue, my first two cards are also directly revealed, said the charming woman, unwilling to be outdone. She looked up at her snow.white chin and called out the name of the girl in the chi pao, showing her familiarity with the girl and taking the opportunity to create some psychological pressure for Yi Feng. As the jade-like slender fingers of the Chong Sam girl continued to play cards, two cards appeared in front of Yi Feng, Red Heart 5 and Red Heart 6. The two tickets in front of a charming woman are 2Q. 500,000. The charming woman pushed the 500,000 chips forward and said with a tight and pretty face. According to the rules of Zha Jinhua, the charming girl has a great advantage over Q. If she had another Q, it would be the rarest leopard among Zha Jinhua. It is because of the large winning potential that she appears so bold and directly launches a 500,000 yuan chip. Hey, plus one million, Yi Feng said directly, pushing the 1.5 million chips. The charming woman's eyebrows furrowed slightly. I didn't expect it to be the first game. For the convenience of placing such a large bet, she didn't personally push this card. She could only calculate the probability of victory by observing her words and expressions, as well as the two cards opened by the opponent. After looking at her own bottom card, the charming woman muttered to herself, is the last card in this little white face's hand red 4 or red 6? If that's the case, that little white face will be the same flush as the red one, but her bottom card is not Q. If she follows, she will definitely lose. Abandon the card, said the charming woman with a regretful expression on her face. Very good, Yi Feng asked after taking over the opponent's bottom and 500,000 chips, I don't know if this sister wants to see the bottom card in my hand. Whatever, the charming woman said lightly. Yi Feng lifted the card and threw the one he was holding onto the table, 
saying, my last card is a square eight. The card in my hand is neither of the same flower nor of the same order, much smaller than my sister's card. Unfortunately, my sister is too timid to bet. Otherwise, this one would have won at least two million. You. The charming woman's pretty face was cold. Losing 600,000 yuan is not a big deal for her, and even if Yi Feng's hand is smaller, she is not a big deal. However, she cannot accept the opponent winning with a bad hand and showing off in front of her. Yi Feng's words are also a slap in the face. The plump woman's pretty face sank, and her almond eyes were also somewhat frightening. Some gamblers who are admiring the full career line and charming figure of charming women feel an indescribable anger in their eyes. They feel a little fear in their hearts for some reason, and timidly withdraw their gaze from the seductive and uneven body of the beautiful woman. Chapter 7 Victory You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xiaotsue, continue playing cards, said the charming woman, biting her teeth. Perhaps just now, Yi Feng was infuriated, and the charming woman lost her usual calmness. As her breathing intensified, the two large lumps on her chest trembled slightly, attracting many men's lewd gaze to keep looking over. Those men stared at the charming woman, secretly indulging in how towering the undulating snow-capped mountains on her chest were, and instead ignored the gambling on the table. Seeing the displeasure on the face of the charming woman, the girl who dealt the cards became even more cautious to avoid touching the other party's mold. The two cards that fell in front of the charming woman were nine hearts and ten hearts. In front of Yi Feng were two air cards. Five hundred thousand, Yi Feng said as he pushed a pile of chips. I don't believe your luck would be so good, the charming woman muttered. From the face of the cards, a charming woman only needs another red heart 8 and red heart J to have the same flush, and it is highly likely that she can win the other party. Yi Feng has a chance to turn the tables unless she has another red heart too. It's because she thinks her chances of winning are relatively high that a charming woman decides to continue gambling with the other party. The Chong San girl played her last card, and after looking at the card in her hand, the charming girl's face showed an extremely confident smile, as if she had already won the game at this moment. The charming woman pushed out a pile of chips on the table and said in a provocative tone, I want to add one million more chips. Do you have the courage to continue with me? I don't have anything, I just have a bit of courage, Yi Feng said after adding one million chips and flipping open a red card. I'm sorry, my deck is a leopard, and I won another game against my sister. In Jia Jinhua, the largest card is the leopard composed of three identical cards. Although Yi Feng's three two cards are the smallest leopard, they can still surpass the largest flush in the hands of charming women. When peeking into the other person's psychology, Yi Feng understood that the other person's hand was not a tonghuashen. As for the other person's arrogant appearance, it was used to scare people. Moreover, even if the other person was really a tonghuashen, the leopard in his hand could still tightly suppress the other person. He has the courage to make such a big bet. Sister, don't you want to show your cards to everyone to take a look? Yi Feng looked up and asked when he saw the opponent give up their cards and give up. No need, the charming woman said angrily. The cards in her hand just now were not of the same order. If she revealed her bottom card, it would expose her true and false, and she would be at a disadvantage in the upcoming gambling game. She ignored the other party's proposal directly because she didn't lose money at the casino. The Chong San girl dealt the cards again, and the two cards revealed by Yi Feng and the charming woman were both Q and K, with similar chances of winning. Who can ultimately win depends entirely on the last card issued by the Chong San girl. As the Chong Sam girl presented the last card in her hand to Yi Feng and the charming woman, she glanced at the card in her hand and secretly exclaimed, It's actually J. I didn't expect to catch a J. Now I have at least 90% chance of winning. I'll win back the money that the little white face won earlier. The game is over, and this little white face is probably losing only his pants. These cards were issued by a Chi Pao girl who didn't understand the game. 
The choice between a charming woman Yi Feng to win the cards was entirely based on luck, judgment ability, and personal courage. She didn't believe her luck would be so bad, so she quietly made an important decision. This young man probably has over five million chips in his hand, right? The charming woman asked knowingly. What does sister mean by saying this? Yi Feng asked in silence. It's not very interesting, I want to win a game with you. I don't know if you dare. The charming woman pushed a five million dollar chip and said. I still said that, there is nothing I dare not do in the world, as long as you dare to bet, I have the courage to follow. Yi Feng smiled. The two of them each placed their chips, and the charming girl lifted a J in her hand, with a triumphant smile on her pretty face, saying, Sorry, I'm lucky. I caught a pair of lucky ones, you're sure to lose this game. I also grabbed a pair of cards. Yi Feng lifted the big A in his hand and said in a calm tone, My last card is slightly larger than yours. The person who lost is you. The charming woman changed her color slightly, and both of them caught Shunzi with three cards connected together. Whoever had a larger last card had a chance to win. The J card in the charming woman's hand was already quite large, and Yi Feng had no chance of winning unless he caught a big sky A. She thought the other party's luck wouldn't always be as good, but she didn't expect Yi Feng to actually have a big sky A in his hand. Yi Feng won 5 million in this game, and with the original winning money, he won tens of millions of chips. Surrounding people are discussing, with envy and envy. It's already very late, miss. Please exchange these chips for money. I should go home too. Yi Feng threw a 10,000 chip to the girl in the Chipao and said. The Chipao girl's monthly salary was only 5,000 yuan, and she received a tip that was almost equivalent to two months' salary before giving Yi Feng a sweet smile. If you win a card and want to leave, do you think there's such a cheap thing in the world? The charming woman's pretty face turned cold when she heard Yi Feng want to leave, and she said in a clearly threatening tone. The customers around who lost money saw that Yi Feng had won a large sum of money and were about to leave. They all complained about the casino, and some even came forward to accuse Yi Feng of having poor character. Human nature is like this. If they see others losing more than themselves, they will be happy in their hearts, but if they see themselves losing money and others winning, their hearts will be very unbalanced. Even if the casino side doesn't want to worry about this matter, these gamblers who have nothing to do with the gambling game will continue to stir up trouble, and the final result is that the casino people will comply with the people's will and take care of Yi Feng. Since my sister insists, I will play the last game with you. No matter who wins or loses in this game, I will leave here, Yi Feng said firmly. He knew that if he persisted, he couldn't do without the casino, so he decided to bet the last game with the other party. The Chong San girl dealt the cards again, and Yi Feng Liang opened two A cards, while the charming woman next to her had two K cards at the table. The onlookers all secretly sighed at Yi Feng's good luck. Judging from these two cards so far, he has slightly surpassed the charming woman. Whoever can win the final victory still depends on the last card. There are over 50 tickets in a deck of cards, and the likelihood of catching a leopard by luck is not high. If a charming woman catches a K card, there is hope that the salted fish will turn over. Yi Feng glanced at the last card and pushed over a million chips. The charming girl decisively placed three million chips and then calmly looked at the opponent. This time, Yi Feng did not continue to follow, but chose to abandon the card directly. Later, Yi Feng stood up and exchanged the chips in his hand for a bag of cash. Both sides had spoken before, and although the charming woman was unwilling, she could not prevent Yi Feng from leaving. On his sister's day, the old lady came with a good hand. As soon as her luck started to slow down, the little white face took the opportunity to slip away. As expected, the forest was big and there were all kinds of birds, so he could do such a tasteless thing. That little white face looked like a cowardly bear. The charming girl cursed directly and slammed the constantly held old K onto the table. 
Cha, Manager Ding actually has 3k cards in his hand. These are very rare big cards. If that little white-faced person continues to follow, he may lose everything, exclaimed a young man. That's right, if you win the money, then run away. This person doesn't have any gambling opportunities. In the future, if this person comes here again, we shouldn't play with him either, said a smoking lady with a curled lips. That little white-faced man had two A cards at the beginning, and the last card must be very poor, so he voluntarily abandoned the card and left, analyzed a middle-aged man with a long beard. An old man suggested, anyway, that person has already left. Let's lift his bottom card and see if he has a good hand or a bad hand. The old man's proposal received a lot of approval from people. Everyone has the desire to peep, and they really want to know what Cardi Fong finally caught in his hand, which is why he lost a million bet. They didn't even have the courage to lift the bottom card and left directly. Xiao Tsui, you go and lift that card. I also want to see what kind of cowardly card that little white face got. She didn't even have the courage to follow the bet and just pouted her butt and ran away. The charming girl said disdainfully. Hmm. At the command of the charming woman, the girl in the chi pao reached out her beautiful little hand and lifted the card left by Yi Fong on the table on the spot. Seeing that card, everyone in the room was stunned. Everyone, including charming women, was surprised. The people in the gambling house had imagined countless possibilities why Yi Fong dared not open the card and left voluntarily. As the girl in the chi pao lifted the card, Everyone finally understood how outrageous their guess was just now. Chapter 8 Goddess Teacher's First Kiss Theft Incident You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Is there anything wrong with my eyes? That little white faced trump card is actually Big A, a top tier leopard with 3A cards, but an invincible supreme card that blocks God and Buddha. No matter what kind of card manager Ding has in his hand, he will be instantly defeated. Since that's the case, why hasn't he been willing to show his trump card? A young man exclaimed incredulously at first. Manager Ding's biggest card is only 3ks. The young man holding three supreme A cards can be said to have one without losing. If he continues to bet, he will definitely win more. Why would he give up the opportunity to win and leave with such an incredible card in his hand? An old man said, you young people already know money in your minds. There are many things in the world that are much more important than money. I guess this young man must be an invincible gambling god. He came to the casino because he lacked money for some reason. Although he can win all the time, he doesn't want to do things too much, so he voluntarily abandoned his cards while holding a supreme hand. The lady who just questioned Yi Feng's brand also spoke up, this young man not only excels in gambling, but also has a very good brand. Even if he wins, he still remembers to leave a way out. If there is a chance in the future, I would like to ask him for advice at the table. Yes, this person's character is indeed good, definitely worth making friends with. After seeing that Yi Feng's bottom card was a big A, everyone praised him for his excellent character, except for the charming girl who bit her teeth and remained silent. Yi Feng chose to give up while holding a winning card, which was somewhat like some unwritten rules on the gambling table. For example, after someone's wealth had dissipated on the table, the casino would find a way to make the gambler who had lost everything win a little, and then persuade them to leave. This is also the principle of staying on the front line in life and making it easier to meet in the future. Yi Feng's approach is similar to this. Thinking of Yi Feng calmly leaving with tens of millions of yuan from the casino and gaining recognition from everyone around him, not only did he continuously lose to the other party, but he was also questioned for his character, the charming woman couldn't help but curse, Grandma, this little white face pretended to give up the one million on the table in order to gain a good reputation. This kid only gave up one million, but he gained both fame and fortune. He took advantage of all the good things alone, and this little white face is too skilled at playing tricks. What a charming woman says may be the truth, but not many people approve of it. There is always a win when there is a loss at the gambling table, 
and casinos cannot allow others to lose money without asking customers to win. Yi Feng's move before leaving was indeed suspected of showing off, but in this world, not everyone can resist the temptation of money. Most people, in the position of Yi Feng, would not voluntarily give up the one million chips they could have at any time, and may even make a big profit with such supreme cards. Yi Feng learned to give up in the face of victory, which earned him the praise and recognition of most people. Sister Ding, that person has already taken a taxi and left. Shall we arrange for someone to intercept him on the way, a burly and sunglasses wearing internal security guard asked in a low voice. The casino has its rules, and those guests can earn a little money to leave. If they earn a lot of money, even if they have a chance to win, they will not be able to spend their lives. From exchanging chips for Yi Feng to taking a taxi to leave, everything is closely monitored by the people of Emperor Entertainment City. As long as the charming woman says a word, the casino staff can intercept Yi Feng at any time. Forget it, the charming woman said with a bitter expression on her face. Yi Feng not only took a large sum of money from the leisure center, but also gained recognition of his character from all gamblers. The people who come here to play have no background. If the casino people go out now to make things difficult for Yi Feng, some gamblers who have lost money and have nowhere to get angry are very likely to stand up and defend Yi Feng, and in turn blame the Emperor Entertainment City. If Emperor Entertainment City really dares to stop Yi Feng, no matter what the final outcome is, the losing side will definitely be them. Even if they successfully recapture Yi Feng's 10 million, they will still offend a large number of old customers for it. If this matter spreads and leaves people with the impression that they can only lose but not win when they come to Emperor Entertainment City to play with money, who dares to come here to play with money in the future? Money gathers and people scatter, and this is the truth that money scatters and people gather. Let me check the background and background of that little white-faced person, and let me see what this person is from. The charming woman's pretty face was covered in a layer of frost, and she said, the money in my Emperor Entertainment City is never easy to get. No matter what the reason is, we can't treat this place as his personal ATM. Ah! Yi Feng heard a young girl's exclamation coming from outside the rental house. Hearing the familiar sounds outside, Yi Feng ran into the courtyard and saw a girl with flowing long hair, full and slim body, wearing a tight-fitting dress, lying on the ground. The girl was wearing thin high heels like stilts on her feet, and the ground in the yard was uneven, which was why she accidentally stepped on them and fell to the ground. Teacher Lu, why are you here? Yi Feng asked in confusion, and then stepped forward to help up the beautiful girl who had fallen to the ground. The girl lying on the ground was Lu Shishir, the beautiful homeroom teacher of Yi Feng at Jiangqing University. During his two years of university life, this goddess teacher, who was praised by Jiangqing University as the most charming woman, had given him great help. Thinking that since his rebirth, he had never returned to school or said hello to his homeroom teacher. Only then did the exhausted teacher come to his door and accidentally sprained his foot. Suddenly, Yi Feng's heart was filled with apologies. Lu Shishir twisted her ankle and couldn't walk. It was only then that Yi Feng supported her waist and returned to her room. She felt the amazing elasticity emanating from Lu Shishir's soft waist, and suddenly felt very embarrassed. Lu Shishir placed her slender lotus arms on Yi Feng's shoulder, like sheep fat and white jade, while her waist was held by the other person's big hand, making her feel very uncomfortable. Lu Shishir is a very conservative woman who has never been so close to the opposite sex before. At this moment, their bodies are side by side, just like a couple in a passionate relationship. Unfortunately, the other party was not Lu Shishir's lover, but her student, which made her very embarrassed. Lu Shishir tried her best to lift her hand from Yi Feng's shoulder and said, I'm fine, I can walk on my own. Okay. Yi Feng also felt that not letting go of the other party was suspected of taking advantage, so he looked unnatural and let go of the other party's waist. At first, when Yi Feng held on to Lu Shishir, he didn't think much. After smelling the enchanting scent constantly wafting from her body, Yi Feng couldn't help but think wildly. 
Feeling the warmth of Lu Shishi reaching his fingertips, Yi Feng's heart surged multiple times with the urge to hold on to Lu Shishi's waist and climb two charming snow-capped mountains, as well as to slide down and touch each other's asterisk 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 asterisk. This is not to say how dirty Yi Feng's thoughts are, but any normal man who comes into close contact with a peerless beauty like Lu Shishi will inevitably have some ambiguous thoughts in his heart. If he continued to support the other person, he was not sure if he could resist doing bad things. After listening to Lu Shishi's proposal, he used strong willpower to pull his hand from Lu Shishi's soft waist. Lu Shishi had just taken a step forward when she suddenly felt an unbearable pain coming from her ankle, causing her body to lose balance again and scream as she leaned forward. Teacher Lu Seeing that Lu Shishi's body was imbalanced, Yi Feng leapt over with one swift step and directly reached out to hug her, to prevent her delicate body from accidentally falling to the ground. Ah! Lu Shishi, who was leaning forward, fell into Yi Feng's warm embrace with a startled cry. Due to their bodies tightly pressed against each other, Lu Shishi's towering chest was directly flattened by Yi Feng's sturdy chest, and a part of her dazzling snow-white skin on the chest was also squeezed out from the collar making her look particularly tempting with a large white flower. Lu Shishi is over 1.7 meters tall, and she wears thin high heels that are not much shorter than chopsticks, which makes her height difference from Yi Feng undoubtedly. After intimate physical contact between the two, not only did their lower abdomen, chest to chest, but their mouths also adhered perfectly together. Neither Yi Feng nor Lu Shishi expected such an ambiguous appearance to be created by chance and error. Yi Feng and Lu Shishi's bodies were tightly intertwined, mouth to mouth. At the same time, their eyes widened and they looked at each other with incredulous eyes. Chapter 9 Ambiguous Rental Housing You are listening at NovelFull.audio Feeling a cool, slightly fragrant and charming aura emanating from his mouth, especially with Lu Shishi's tender and bouncy chest, Yi Feng suddenly felt a short circuit in his mind and didn't know how to face everything in front of him. He never expected such an awkward situation to happen between himself and his beloved beautiful homeroom teacher. In his heart, Lu Shishi was like his own sister. Not only did he hold her in his arms, but he also squeezed her plump breasts with his sturdy chest and accidentally kissed her forcefully. He doesn't know what to do. Lu Shishi is also completely foolish. Although she is not considered a girl, due to her strict personal life, her work during the past two years of teaching at university has been extremely busy, and she has not even had the opportunity to talk to someone on a regular basis. Perhaps others don't believe it, but she knows that what she lost just now was the first kiss that had been cherished for decades. Thinking that her first kiss did not go to her crush, but instead belonged to one of her students in an accident, Lu Shishi felt both shy and depressed. Yi Feng was also particularly embarrassed at this moment. If he had let go at this moment, Lu Shishi might have fallen on the spot, and it seemed inappropriate to continue holding the other person in his arms. After a while, Yi Feng tilted his upper body back slightly, leaving his mouth away from the fragrant lips of Lu Shishi, which were as beautiful and fragrant as petals. He said helplessly, Teacher Lu, I didn't mean to do it earlier. Hmm. Lu Shishi blushed and nodded shyly. What happened just now was very obvious. Yi Feng was worried about her falling, so he took the initiative to support himself. She couldn't blame the other party for getting her first kiss. Feeling the warmth emanating from Yi Feng's embrace, Lu Shishi not only felt a bit confused and enamored, but also didn't know how to get along with the student, so she blushed and closed her beautiful eyes. Teacher Lu, let me carry you inside, Yi Feng said, and then he directly hugged Li Shanshan's delicate body horizontally on his chest. After his rebirth, Yi Feng's psychology was significantly more mature than his previous life. It was only when he encountered such things that he became more calm than Lu Shishi. If he continued to support Lu Shishi, their posture would be too ambiguous, and there might be another spark between their bodies rubbing against each other. He simply picked each other up. Although Lu Shishi's figure was tall enough, Yi Feng held her in his arms without feeling any weight in his hands. 
Lu Shishu's body was extremely light, with only a little more flesh on her chest and buttocks, and all other parts of her body were slim and excessive, so Yi Feng could easily pick her up. Yi Feng, how long have you been thinking about not coming to school? Have you forgotten that you are still a student at school? After drinking another glass of water in the rented house, Lu Shishu's mood gradually calmed down. Remembering her intention to come here, she took the initiative to ask. I haven't been to school for just over half a month, Yi Feng said nonchalantly. Lu Shishu has also heard of the things that happened between Yi Feng and Lin Shui. She said in a tone of advice, Yi Feng, it is time for you to learn knowledge now. Love is not everything in life. You cannot give up on yourself just because of setbacks in love. Teacher Lu, I'm not giving up on myself. I know what I'm doing. May I ask Teacher Lu, even if I study hard, what future prospects do I have? Yi Feng asked in response. You can stay on campus in the future and also take the postgraduate entrance exam. You have many choices. Yi Feng shook his head and said, the spots for staying on campus have been reserved for some students with backgrounds, and it's not my turn as an ordinary person. My ultimate solution is to find a company to work for. Since that's the case, it's better to work early as it can save a few years of time. After his rebirth, Yi Feng became indifferent to many things. In this life, he did not value a diploma from Jiangqing University. Nowadays, the graduation certificate for college students is no longer as effective as before, and this situation will become more serious in the future. Yi Feng also wants to gain social recognition too early, so that he will not be despised by others when he is with Lin Shui in the future, and will not take school seriously. Yi Feng, how could you say that? You don't even have a college graduation certificate. What good companies will be willing to accept you in the future? I came to see you today, asking you to go to school tomorrow. If you dare to skip classes for a long time, I will come to your residence every day to scold you. Lu Shishu didn't know that Yi Feng had achieved a comeback in the Emperor Entertainment City. The reason why she said this to him was because she hated him for not being strong enough. Thinking that this beautiful teacher was genuinely good to herself, Yi Feng was also moved in his heart. Yi Feng, no matter how busy you are, I will host the annual college sports meet next Monday. You must go there on that day, Lu Shishu continued. Yi Feng knew that the reason why Lu Shishu proposed this was to take the opportunity to persuade him to change his original intention and continue studying. Although he did not have such thoughts, he remembered the other party's kindness to him in the past, and only then agreed that he would definitely go to Lu Shishu's school on the day of the sports meeting. While chatting, Yi Feng noticed that Lu Shishu's beautiful eyebrows were constantly furrowing and her body seemed very uncomfortable. He then asked with concern, Teacher Lu, is your foot sprained very badly? Hmm. Lu Shishu nodded. She didn't expect Yi Feng to live in such a remote rental house. There were many weeds and bricks in the courtyard of the rental house, and she was wearing those slender high heels, which accidentally twisted her foot. She kept enduring it, but felt her ankle becoming increasingly painful. If the sprained foot is not treated soon, it will leave serious sequelae. I'll show you, Yi Feng said with concern. When Yi Feng used to learn Sanda and combat skills, he often got injured all over his body. Later, he gradually learned to massage and correct the bones without a teacher. After his rebirth, he didn't act as hesitantly as before, and only then did he make such a proposal directly. Uh, Lu Shishu's pretty face suddenly turned red. The area where she was injured just now is her ankle. If Yi Feng were to take a look, wouldn't they be taking the opportunity to play with her beautiful feet? Thinking that the other party was her student, Lu Shishu's expression became a bit awkward. After seeing Yi Feng's clear gaze, she secretly blamed herself for overthinking. Yi Feng was clearly showing good intentions, but she was overthinking. She awkwardly lifted her beautiful feet in front of Yi Feng. Yi Feng took off Lu Shishu's beautiful high-heeled sandals and looked at his beautiful feet wrapped in black stockings. His heart trembled suddenly, 
as the thin stockings in front of him couldn't conceal Lu Shirsher's charming little feet. Her beautiful feet were indeed too beautiful. Her thighs were covered in black stockings, outlining highly elastic and perfectly shaped thighs, making Yi Feng blush and heartbeat. Thinking of Lu Shirsher's trust in herself, yet secretly admiring the other person's beautiful legs and feet, Yi Feng felt a little embarrassed. He stabilized his mind in front of him and said, Teacher Lu, I want to take off your stockings first. Ah, you still need to take off your stockings. Lu Shirsher asked awkwardly. I need to take a look at your swollen and red area. If you look through the stockings, it will be very unclear. I'll do it myself. Lu Shirsher placed her hand at the base of her thigh and then withdrew her long stockings inch by inch. Her tight and round legs, emitting a charming halo, were fully exposed in front of Yi Feng. Yi Feng felt that it was not good to keep staring at the other person's beautiful legs. He wanted to turn around, but also felt that doing so would leave some traces, making it seem like there was a ghost in his heart, so he didn't turn his head. Well, that's it. Lu Shishir lifted her flawless white jade, legs and feet like lotus roots, and reached out to Yi Feng. Upon hearing Lu Shushir's beautiful and melodious voice, Yi Feng came to his senses. He stared at the other person's crystal clear feet and slightly swollen ankles for a while, then reached out to grasp their beautiful feet. A stunning smoothness reached Yi Feng's palm. Yi Feng struggled to control her desires that were constantly growing like weeds in her heart. With a forceful twist of her hands, her ankles finally returned to their original position amidst the painful screams of Lu Shirsher. Teacher Lu, I'll rub it for you again, and you can go straight to the ground. Feeling that although her ankle was not as painful as before, it still felt a bit uncomfortable, Lu Shirsher nodded shyly. As Yi Feng needed the opponent's ankle, a sudden surge of breath surged into his hands, causing Lu Shirsher's swollen and red ankle to quickly recover at a speed visible to the naked eye. Yi Feng was somewhat surprised. He didn't expect the boundless energy in his body to be able to heal someone else's injuries. After seeing the swollen area of the other person's ankle turn white and red, unlike before, he completely relieved himself. Due to Lu Shishir sitting at the head of the bed, while Yi Feng was half kneeling under the bed with a relatively low posture, when he looked up, his gaze naturally followed Lu Shishir's short skirt all the way in. The tender white end of Lu Shishir's thigh was tightly surrounded by pink hollow thongs. Unexpectedly, a girl like Lu Shishir who looked unfazed by her charm would also wear these sexy thongs. What made Yi Feng even more enchanting was that he could almost see the plump contours and black triangle between Lu Shishir's legs. Yi Feng's heart suddenly skipped a beat. How could he sneak a peek at the homeroom teacher's place? Is it also possible for ordinary people to sneak a peek inside a woman's short skirt? What made Yi Feng even more ashamed and ashamed was that Lu Shishir's gaze was also looking at him at this moment. The two seemed to have thought of something before blushing together, and the atmosphere in the room instantly became ambiguous. 10. Chapter 10 Scenery Inside the Skirt You are listening at NovelFull.audio Remembering the strange gaze that Yi Feng had just shown while squatting at the bedside and quietly peering into her short skirt, Lu Shishir felt ashamed and wanted to die, secretly thinking that the other party must have seen her lace thong. Although her ankles had healed, when she left the courtyard of the rental house, she still walked lightly, with shallow and deep feet. It's not that she walked carelessly, but that her mood is very chaotic at this moment. She feels like her heart has never been as chaotic as it is now, and she doesn't even know how she left Yi Feng's residence. Thinking that while needing Lu Shishir's ankle, she couldn't control her eyes and secretly peeked at the scenery inside her skirt, Lu Shishir's pretty face turned even redder than a ripe red apple when she noticed her gaze, which made Yi Feng feel very embarrassed. He doesn't know if they will have the courage to face each other when they meet again in the future. Uncle Li, I heard that your house wants to be sold to the public. Not long after Lu Shishir left, Yi Feng began to tirelessly contact a generation of landlords in the suburbs of Dongcheng who wanted to sell properties, in order to quickly purchase some currently very affordable suburban properties. 
It was only then that he first found a courtyard not far from his rented house and started talking to an elderly man in his fifties who was not tall but very energetic. Yes, do you want to buy my courtyard house? An elderly man in his fifties asked with a skeptical expression on his face. The rental house rented by Yi Fong was not far from his courtyard house, so the old man met Yi Fong. He knew that he came from the countryside and was a poor student with little income, so he didn't believe that he had the ability to buy his own courtyard house. Anyway, asking one more question won't lose anything, the old man only had a casual conversation with Yi Fong without a word. Yi Chen pretended to be helpless and said, I recently talked to a girlfriend who lives locally at school. Although my girlfriend didn't say anything, her family demanded that I buy a house in the city to agree to our formal relationship. Uncle, do you know how high the property prices in Jiangqing are? Even a house in the suburbs costs millions. I don't have that much money, so I have to buy a bungalow in a remote suburb to make up for it. The old man thought to himself, the girl from Jiangqing has a very high vision. How could she talk to you? a poor student without a local household registration. That girl is probably just playing for you. You silly hat really take it seriously. Anyway, it's not the old man's own daughter marrying Yi Fong, and he didn't inquire about it in detail. He made a very generous appearance and said, it turns out this is the case. My courtyard house is facing the street, and it's quite new. The market value is at least 350,000 yuan. Considering that you are a good young man, I can sell it to you for 300,000 yuan. Damn it, a bungalow worth at most 200,000 yuan has actually been inflated to 350,000 yuan. If you boast about paying taxes, there will be times when you old man cries, Yi Chen cursed inwardly. This generation is in the suburbs and there are no large factories nearby. The price of bungalows is slightly higher compared to the countryside below. The old man said that his house has a market value of 350,000 yuan, which is definitely a blow to the sky. Although in a few months, nearby housing prices will rise nearly tenfold or more, Yi Fong now does not want to be the scapegoat of being foolish and having too much money. Uncle, I think your roof is worth more than 100,000 yuan. Yi Feng's heart hardened and he shamelessly quoted the other party's property as a cabbage price. Even if you kill me for 100,000 yuan, I won't sell it. My house is worth at least 250,000 yuan, the old man rolled his eyes and said. He thought to himself, is there such a bargain? In just one sentence, he cut his house from 300,000 to 100,000 yuan. Upon hearing that the old man had voluntarily lowered his price by 50,000 yuan, Yi Fong tried to negotiate with the other party again and ultimately reached a deal at a price of 210,000 yuan. When both parties were exchanging money and property certificates, Yi Fong saw that the old man's eyes were somewhat abnormal. He then used his mind peeping technique to glance at the other person and saw the old man across from him thinking to himself, My house has a psychological price of 190,000 yuan, but this young man spent 210,000 yuan. He is indeed a asterisk 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 young man. After understanding the old man's inner mockery, Yi Fong cursed inwardly, at most for a few months, all the properties nearby will appreciate by more than ten times. At that time, I could easily make millions by just flipping my hands. By then, you old man will no longer receive any benefits. Only then will you understand who the real asterisk 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 is. After negotiating this order, Yi Fong began to contact other landlords in the suburbs of Dongcheng who wanted to sell bungalows. The price he offered was generally 1 to 20,000 yuan higher than the market price, and both buyers and sellers were happy. It took about a week, and most of the bungalows that were intended for sale fell into Yi Feng's hands. At this time, some businessmen with backgrounds also heard some news through special channels and began to purchase nearby properties on a large scale. Some residents living nearby also heard some rumors, and they tightly held on to their properties. Even if they were to sell them, the price would be several times higher than before. At this point, Yi Fong could no longer afford to buy cheap properties. 
He had already spent almost all the millions he had won at the casino, so he stopped taking action and quietly waited for the news of the high dot speed rail construction to be announced by the TV station. On that day, Yi Feng wanted to go to a nearby mall to buy some daily necessities. Before he could leave, a stylish sports car suddenly drove over and stopped at the entrance of the rental house. A middle dot aged man with a strong appearance and two bodyguards stumbled into the courtyard. Who are you? Yi Feng glanced at the stylish middle dot aged man walking at the front and asked. It doesn't matter who we are, what's important is that I came here today to give my younger brother a chance of prosperity, the middle dot aged man said with a smile. To forge iron, you need to be tough yourself. If you don't have the ability, even beggars on the streets won't pay attention to you. If you have the ability, even strangers will actively come and build friendships. Yi Feng had no acquaintance with this middle dot aged man, so he didn't believe that the other person would give him a fortune for no reason. If you have anything to say, please speak directly, Yi Feng asked coldly. He he, little brother, I heard that you recently purchased a large number of properties in the suburbs of Dongcheng. I am willing to buy all the properties in your hands for twice the original purchase price. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sell my property. Yi Feng cursed inwardly, bastard, this person is clearly here to drink his own blood, but he said he would give himself a rich and prosperous life. In just two months, his real estate will at least appreciate by nearly ten times. This person only wants a price that is twice the original price, so he takes the property he has worked hard to negotiate as his own. It's just too beautiful. I have something to attend to outside, goodbye. Little brother, I suggest you consider my words more. Pifu is innocent and Huayu is guilty. As an ordinary person with no background, you hold so many scarce properties that it is difficult to avoid causing trouble for yourself. I am willing to offer three times the price to purchase all the land in your hands. If you know the current situation, you should know how to choose. The middle-aged man raised his voice and said in a determined tone. 